Hi, I'm Bob. And I'm Josh from the Fly Rod Show. And this month in the newsletter, we're going to talk to you guys about fishing hopper dropper rigs. We're fishing um, in the months of July, August, and September with a lot of terrestrial patterns. So we're going to show you some ways of rigging the pattern, setting it up on your leader, and then some different ways to uh, use some stuff to be able to use the product better. So now let's uh, show you some different fly patterns that you can use for hopper dropper fishing. We're going to start with a grasshopper pattern. Um, you can use really big dry flies for your first fly on your dropper rig. Uh, stimulators work great. And this foam hopper pattern floats like a cork. For your second fly, try using small wet flies, ants, bead headed nymphs, top ride products by Loon for dressing your flies, Loon's Aquel and for your wet flies we recommend that you use a sinket which is a paste that'll sink the fly. Now Josh will come in and show you how to tie the rig to your leader system. When tying a hopper dropper rig the first fly that you want to tie to your dropper will be the large dry fly I usually recommend that people use a five and a half to seven and a half foot leader to your first fly. And for the purposes of the video that we're shooting, we want you guys to be able to see the line. So we're using 20 pound chartreuse green Dacron backing, but the monofilaments generally taper down to three to four X in size. I use a regular improved clinch knot or clinch knot to tie it. And then this particular dropper rig that we're demonstrating today is called an inline dropper. So we're actually going to attach the, the tippet to the bend of the hook of the first fly. In this case, the large hopper pattern. And again, we're going to secure that to the bend of the hook with either a fisherman's knot, uh, clinch knot, improved clinch knot, or whichever knot you're comfortable tying. The tippet of that uh, section of your leader should be approximately 24 to 36 inches in length, depending on the depth that you want to fish. And then the flies that I mentioned to you earlier, uh, either the terrestrial, the beadhead nymph, or a soft tackle emerger for fishing behind the dropper rig is then attached to that tippet section, again with the fisherman's knot or clinch knot. Once you've secured both flies, trim the access off, and then keeping in mind your entire leader system now is approximately gonna run between eight and a half and 10 feet in length. So there's your hopper fly, and your second fly is trailing behind that. Now, one of the most important parts of fishing a hopper dropper rig is to make sure that you dress your dry fly so it floats well. You're trailing a second fly behind it, and if you don't dress the fly with your loon aquel or your fly paste, dry fly paste, the fly will sink just based on the weight of the fly that's trailing behind it. So Josh is now putting a, a generous portion of aquel on and then grease the leader by taking the excess and stripping it up the monofilament. Now we're going to take our Henry Sinket, which is our wet fly paste, and in this case we're dressing a nymph, a beadhead nymph, which doesn't need a lot of dressing, but on your soft tackles and your um, flies that are fished just below the surface, make sure you grease that fly and then slide that grease up the leader. Now when you're casting your dropper rig, hopper dropper rig, the dropper on top of the water is basically acting as a strike indicator. 
So even though you can't see the second fly, you can see how the dry fly sits on top of the water. And with hopper fishing, what you want to do is make sure the fish have an opportunity to see the fly move in the current. We're casting our fly onto a pond, but in a moving river current, definitely give the fly some action so that the fly is creating some movement that the fish will be attracted to. If you use a dry fly and you fish in fast water, the fly will eventually sink, the surface fly. So at that point, we want to dress our fly with top ride. So this is after the fly's been fished, or if the fish is caught, the slime from the fish will actually make the fly sink when it hits the water. So we dress it with our uh, desiccant, which is the top ride. After the fly comes out of the bottle, just uh, blow off the excess material. And when you notice Josh casting it, uh, the fly hits the water and even though the fly was sinking before, now you can see how it floats like a cork. The harder that Josh is pulling the fly on the surface, you can see how the fly actually just stays right on top. And in that case, he pulled it real hard and the fly still floats. So if you guys need any more information on fishing the hopper dropper rig, give us a call at the Fly Rod Shop or go to our website at www.flyrodshop.com.